Hello Legacy students, Marsh here. So today we're going to talk about translated form of linear functions. You may have heard of linear functions before, aka lines, but this is going to be another way and a more, let's say, awesome way to be able to graph linear functions and to write them. So let's talk about what we've done before in classes. So if I was told, hey, I need to write an equation of, well, let's do blue. I need to write an equation of a line that has a slope of three fifths and passes through the point of one over one, two. Now you're probably going, well, I kind of remember this, Marsh. I did y equals three fifths x plus b, right? And then you took this ordered pair and you plugged that in for x and y. Nope, that's a three. Then you multiplied, and then you had to subtract three fifths, and then you solve for b, right? It would be a fraction in this case. Or some of you may have remembered this equation, which is known as point slope, in which you plugged in the ordered pair and then you solved for y. Now I'm going to show you a different way and I'm going to say it's a lot easier of a way. So here's where that foldable that you have is coming into play. The translative form is used when writing an equation of a line or when graphing and when given a point and a slope. So this is super useful in the regards of we don't have to have the b term at all. We don't have to have the y-intercept. We don't need to care about it. So this is our translated form of our line. f of x equals m parenthesis x minus h plus k. The h is how much you've translated left or right, opposite of what you think it should be. So left is going to have a plus on it and right is going to have a negative. The h is how far horizontally you moved or left or right. Now, that h is going to also be the x part of our ordered pair. Okay. And it tells us how much did we move left and how much or how much did we move right, depending on what sign's on there. k is how much you translated up or down. It's the way you think it should be. So if I have a plus three out there, that means I moved up three. If I have a negative out there, that means I moved down. This is going to be the y part of our ordered pair. Okay, and the m, you guys already know what the m is. That's your slope, okay. So we're going to be using this to write equations of lines, just like I did at the beginning there, but this is going to be a lot quicker than solving for b. So let's actually try an example here. So I need to write the equation of a line that passes through the given point and has the given slope. They tell me that the point is negative 2, negative 5, and my slope is 3. So I'm going to use my translated form of my lines. So y equals m x minus x or h plus k. Okay, so h is how far left or right do I have to go to get to this ordered pair? m, of course, is my slope, so let's plug it in. x. Now, how far left or right did I have to go to get to negative 2? Well, I had to go, oh, from 0, 0. I had to go left 2, right? From 0, 0, I would have to go left 2 to get to negative 2. So what I'm going to write is I'm going to put x plus 2. It's going to be opposite of what you think it should be. So instead of being negative 2, you have to put plus 2 because it's that negative there. It's kind of changing the sign on you. Then the k is how far up or down did I have to go from 0, 0 to get to negative 5? Well, down 5, right? So I got to write. I got to go down 5. Now, here's the secret part to this. You are an enriched Algebra 2 student now. You have every right to leave it. 
You can leave it like that. That's an official answer. And I will accept that very official answer. Okay. And I know you're thinking, you're like, oh, she's tricking us. She's, she's, she's going to say that we have to do it. You have to do something to it. No, you can leave it like that. Now, if that doesn't sit well with you, here is ultimately what we can do. We can distribute the three in. And then I could solve it further. So this is equivalent to that equation. This is probably like, let's say I want to graph this. I would use 3x plus 1. If I had to write, just leave the equation, just write the equation, I would probably leave it in this form. You don't have to get out a translated form. You can leave the answer in translated form if you do not want to distribute and get it into y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form. Let's try a second example. Let's write the equation of the line that passes through the given points. 2, 3, and 4, 7. Now, I need to know how to write A, find the slope, right? We don't have a slope, and I also need to know which of those points to use. So, sidebar, we're going to need to write information here. How do you find slope, or what's also known as a rate of change? To do that, you're going to find the change of y's over the change of x, aka subtract the y's over subtract the x. You might remember as y2 minus y1. It doesn't matter on the little numbers. Just remember, y minus y over x minus x. Subtract the y's over subtract the x. Get on with it, all right? So I'm going to do my y's. So I'm going to do the easy way. I'm going to go 7 minus 3 because I like the numbers when it's not going to turn out to be negative. So I'm going to go 7 minus 3. This is my slope. And 4 minus 2. If I start on this, on this point, I have to also use the x values on that point as well. So I'm going to solve 4 over 2. So it looks like my slope is 2. So I can start writing the equation of my line. Now, we have two separate points to pick from. Which one do we use? Honestly, it doesn't matter. We could use either of those two ordered pairs and we'll still get the same answer. You're like, no, we're not. One has a seven, one has a three. But let's see. I'll show you both of them and we'll see that they both simplify to be the same thing. So let's use the two comma three version. So again, I gotta think, how did I get from two or from zero zero, how did I get to the point two comma three? Well, I would have gone right two and up three, right? So I have to notate that I went right two, so that's a minus two, and I went up three. Okay, so by me writing minus two, that's me notating I went right two, the 3 tells me I went up 3. Let's distribute. So I got 2x minus 4 plus 3, which is 2x minus 1. Let's go and do the other order pair. Just to prove to you guys that you're going to get the same answer. So I'm going to still have the same slope. Now, how did I get from 0, 0 to 4, 7? Well, I would have had to go on right 4 and up 7, right? So x minus 4 would be me notating I went right 4 and I went up 7. Let's distribute. All right, 2x minus 8 plus 7. <gasps> Looky there, it turned into 2x minus 1 as well. So it does not matter which numbers you use. It doesn't matter which ordered pair you use. You can use either of the ordered pairs if you're given more than one, and you will still write the equation of the line. It does not matter. Okay, super awesome. So what I usually do is I do the one with the easier ordered pair, the easier numbers. And again, you could leave your answers in either of these two versions. However, if you feel the need that you must distribute this would also be a correct answer, 2x minus 1. Let's try another one. 
I need to write the equation of a line that passes through the point for one and is perpendicular to f of x equals one third x plus three. Now, sidebar conversation. We need to talk about perpendicular. You talked about this last year in geometry. You also talked about this in algebra one. What does it mean for slopes to be perpendicular? And what does it mean for slopes to be parallel? So let's talk about parallel first, right? Parallel lines are special in the regards of they'll never intersect, right? Well, if they never intersect, the slopes are the same, right? If the two lines never intersect, I have to have slopes that are exactly the same on my lines. What about perpendicular? You might remember long ago, there was some words that you remembered. They were opposite reciprocals of one another. Now you're probably thinking, Marsh, I remember that, but I can't remember what it actually means. So what that means is opposite signs and they have been flipped. So if I have a slope that is one half, his perpendicular friend is a negative, because it's the opposite sign, and a flip. So that'd be negative two over one. So these are opposite reciprocals of one another. So for this equation, they gave me a line. They want a perpendicular line. This equation, I don't care what the B is. I don't care what that Y intercept is. All that I want from this equation, I want that slope. That B could be 10 billion million. I don't care. I want to know what was the slope. And they want me to find the slope perpendicular to that. So my new slope would be the opposite reciprocal. So the negative version of one flip of one third, which is negative three, right? So now that's the last thing I need of this equation. This equation is, is done. I now need this ordered pair that they gave me. So y equals negative three, parenthesis. Now I gotta think, how did I get to four comma one from zero, zero? Well, I would have went right four and up one, right? So I gotta notate that I went up or right four. So remember, it's opposite what you think it should be. A negative will mean you're going right and I'm going up one. And we're going to leave it like that because I don't want to actually write it any different. Now, you could distribute and you would get negative 3x plus 13. I don't need to write it like that. We can leave our answers in translated form now in this class. Now, what I'm going to ask you guys to do is do some problems on your foldable. Okay? I'm going to ask you to try these problems. When we get back to class tomorrow, I am going to put these problems for you guys to answer as an entry ticket. So that way you guys can try them on your, we can see how you guys did and if we have any questions before you guys start the activity for the day. So there are two problems that I want you to complete. And that's the end of the video. I will see you later, Sabres.